okay so here we have a footage inside nuke and uh, yes we are going to do some works in this footage so if you are an artist who is working as a paint or prep artist you might be aware that um, celebrity is a fantastic tool which helps you to get paint and prep works done pretty easily and with all the new updates in this software the work is getting much easier so in this video we will see one of the latest update and we'll see how we can make use of this update and get our work done pretty easily without further delay let's see what is that okay so we have the footage here so i'm going to do a quick playback here the work range of footage is 1 to 541 i don't want the work range to be that long so let's keep this as uh, sorry as 50 so 1 to 50 is my work range and then i'm going to do a playback it's a pretty easy shot to do inside nuke also so let's discuss what's the task for this shot cool so let's remove all these dark spots around her neck and also there are pimples on her face uh, which we can remove i'm not going to remove entire stuff as the tutorial will become very lengthy so instead of that i will show you some simple techniques uh, using silhouette 2022 latest updates on a general note i would say that we can get this shot done inside nuke also as you all know we have rotopane node inside nuke which is very powerful in my experience at most times it gets very laggy and whenever we paint a lot of strokes inside rotopane node inside nuke always my files gets very heavy and very hard to work with rotopane node inside nuke i always prefer silhouette for paintworks let's press tab in the keyboard and type in silhouette this node is the OFX version of Silhouette for Nuke. If you have this plugin, then it's going to be very easy for you to work. You don't have to create a new project outside Nuke. I'm going to show you how this node works. If you have watched multiple tutorials in my channel, you might have already noticed I have used this many times. Let's connect the input pipe into the plate and inside the properties we have some options here i'm not going to explain what all are these things uh, right now so instead of that uh, if you click on open silhouette interface button it will take some time to open up cool so there is a pop-up here we can write some name here for our project so let's type in spot removal 0 2 why because if i type 1 here you can see i cannot create a project because there is already a project with that name so I'm going to type in 02 here and make sure all the other settings are matching with your footage and click on create project. Cool. So the best thing which I noticed using OFX version of Silhouette is that we don't have to load the footage or input inside the software. It is automatically loaded from Nuke. So let's suppose if you have to blur this footage and work on that, you can do that inside Nuke and connect the Silhouette plugin into that blur node and then open Silhouette so that your footage will be blurred inside Silhouette as well. That's pretty handy. Here we have the footage already loaded as I told. So I'm going to keep the work range as 50, just similar to Nuke. Cool, so the image is cached and you can see the input is playing here. So we are going to remove these dark spots as well as uh, some of the pimples on our cheeks. We can use paint node and roto node for you know painting strokes and uh, using tracks inside roto node to animate that strokes. Uh, but instead of that we have some latest updates in Silhouette 2022 which is super useful. I repeat it's gonna be very useful in your work. So if you guys always use some kind of uh, plugins or gizmos inside new for marker removal for example if you use pxf filler node a lot in your work this latest update in silhouette is going to be helpful to you because you don't have to jump into nuke for using those kind of tools we have some kind of similar tool inside silhouette as well so let's see what is that and how we can use that i'm going to delete all this stuff here those were our primitive choice for auto paint so instead of that i'm going to use the new update in paint inside silhouette it's very easy to use this i'm going to show you how we can use that so before we jump and search the node from these tabs we have some handy updates in the latest version of silhouette press tab in keyboard this is just similar to nuke type in paint which is the node which we want and click on this in paint and we have in paint node in our trees window we don't have to go and search inside this complete list of nodes isn't that great connect the in paint node into the input and uh, let's see how we can make use of that cool so as you can see we have some tool here inside in paint 
you are definitely aware what these tools are if you are aware of rotonode right all these tools are very similar or exactly similar to the tools inside rotonode we can see that this is very similar to roto and paint process if you check the properties we don't have anything right now let's uh, come into the first frame and uh, let's take a circle node or let's take a busier node and uh, draw a shape here just drawn a shape here and as you can see we have some properties right now and also you can see complete area inside this shape is matched or smeared so i'm going to keep this as foreground right now and uh, click on this tracker icon thing which i'm going to do is track this specific area because using this track we can draw specific shapes on these spots so i'm going to track this area using this shape make sure you are inside mocha tracker and track cool so our track is done and you can check that inside the stabilize node it's not that bad i guess this tracks works for me so let's jump into the object list and here we have a track layer so i'm going to select that uh, line and going to delete that and make sure you have selected the track layer and uh, just take a circle shape uh, because it's very easy to draw a circle shape around this spot and just animate the shape um, throughout the work range so this looks pretty solid for me and uh, I'm going to draw a shape for this one as well. Cool. So come back to the object list and hide this. Select this circle shape and uh, yes we have some properties for this circle shape. So let's go into the output mode. You can see already our result is there. That spot is completely removed. But if you want to fine tune this area a bit, you can come back into the properties and uh, adjust this bit. Opacity is basically just controlling the transparency of the removal. Uh, stroke width and cap style that is for open shapes which I am going to play in later in this video. And inside algorithm there is a pull down menu here. So you can see none which uh, does nothing and we have clone which I'm going to explain later and we have NS and Telia which are two algorithms which helps us to do uh, this kind of removal task. Uh, I'm going to show you what's the difference between both. So let's draw a big shape here. So here we have NS algorithm which uh, somewhat a better result like this. So if you want to change this to Telia. You can see there is a minute difference. I'm not sure. I didn't explore much about these two algorithms. So I'm not sure in which situations what algorithm works. Explore yourself about this. So I'm going to delete this stuff. Just select the uh, circle shape and uh, we have smoothness here. So smoothness is just controlling the smoothness inside the texture and edge softness is kind of an edge blur thing. We can make use of these values to blend the, uh, you know, texture or blend the removal task with the original input. Inside stretch properties, we have amount offset angle and smoothness. All these properties can be used to adjust the texture inside the removal area. Also, we have some properties for detail adjustments. So inside uh, detail we have two options here you can fine tune with this when you're working transform properties are mainly for a clone algorithm so I'm going to explain that later and also we have great properties which is uh, kind of deactivated right now and uh, I'm going to explain how this helps later in this tutorial so stick to the tutorial got it so I guess you all understood what all these properties are and how it can be helpful in your work let's play and see how the result looks like uh, with simply drawing the shape and without adjusting much in the properties. It looks fantastic, right? You don't have to do any kind of works here. That's fabulous, I would say. I guess this is an easy area to work. So let's jump into this spot and see how we can make use of this in paint node for getting rid of this dark spot. So already we have a shape for that. Let's turn on that shape and uh, let's play and see how the result looks like. It's already looking better, right? Amazing. So if you come back to this range or any range where you are not sure about the result, you can go into the properties and uh, just try to play with the properties here like uh, offset or angle. Uh, as this is a very small shape, we are not able to see the impact of these properties. If you have something bigger to remove, you can definitely explore on these properties and get a good result. Without fine tuning much, we already have a better result here. This is way easier than using a paint node instead of it, right? Just comment it down if you are agreeing with my opinion. Cool. So let's jump into her face or all these pimples on her cheeks. As her head has different kind of movement, I'm going to track with a new layer here. So go back to the object list and uh, let's draw a new shape around her cheeks. Keep this as in foreground 
and uh, this time i'm going to turn on shear and perspective let's see how it can help in our tracking cool so we have a good result here our track looks pretty decent i would say we can easily animate a shape using this track for sure so go back to the object list and i'm going to delete this shape here because we don't need that maybe come back to the first frame and draw a circle over this part and this time i'm going to make this shape a little bigger because to show you how these properties can help in our work Cool, so with these four keyframes, we are able to complete the whole animation of shape here and you can see it is pretty much uh, working. So repeating again here that every shape has its own properties. So you can tweak these properties for individual shapes. Uh, that's pretty useful, right? Inside this shape properties, I'm going to keep this as output mode. And as you can see, it's uh, already a good result. Uh, you can turn off the overlay and check it. It's not that good i would say uh let's turn on the overlay and uh, just tweak the properties a bit uh, let's see how we can see it's blended a bit more so amount properties can be useful in this area offset if you keep the amount you can offset this a bit useful in some situations again it totally depends on your shot and the texture you have in your shot uh, and angle let's uh, do this a bit uh, it's not that helpful in this case so I'm going to leave that as it is and uh, we already have some kind of issues here so better I'm going to use clone algorithm here so as soon as I selected a clone you can see that uh, all these properties are hidden and uh, that's because we don't need all these things we are just going to clone so this is just similar to the paint node we can use clone to clone from other areas of the plate if you keep the algorithm as clone and uh, just come back to the transform properties we have opacity and edge softness here which obviously helps in your work so instead of adjusting stretch and detail i'm going to adjust offset here as i'm adjusting offset you can see we have source as well as target or target as well as source so i'm going to place it somewhere around uh, maybe here and we can even rotate this a bit to match the lighting and now i can turn off the overlay here scale i don't want that much maybe a bit and just adjust the edge smoothness a bit right awesome now let's play and see how our result looks like okay here we have some issues so other fantastic thing which i'm going to explain here is that you can keyframe pretty much all these properties so right now I'm going to set a keyframe here for edge smoothness and come back to the last keyframe and as you can see we have some issues with that. So let's remove this edge smoothness a bit and as you can see it's a keyframe right now. So our result looks somewhat okay. If you are not convinced here you can uh, adjust this a bit more. You can set a keyframe for this as well. So maybe I will just pull this a bit. Cool, so I have adjusted this a bit and as you can see it's uh, having some issues here but this is just for a tutorial purpose. I'm going to show you one more important thing here. If there is an area in your work where you need some color adjustments, you can just turn on this auto grade and it will do pretty much an amazing job automatically to match the color and again if it's not working you can manually do that here like you can adjust gain gamma lift hue and saturation as well. Again it all depends on the texture which you are working. Also we have some filter settings here so I always prefer my filter to be in catmull rom so if you want to change that you can even change that in the pull down menu. So pretty much this is all about clone algorithm and I hope you understood how we can make use of clone inside our work. So I guess you understood what's the use of these algorithms and how we can or where we can use this algorithm specifically. Again if you feel this tutorial is helping you in some way or if it's informative please hit that like button and also also please let me know in comments how this tutorial is helping you or what all are some other topics which you would like to see as a tutorial. Cool so before ending this tutorial I'm going to show you one more important thing. So I haven't explained these two options stroke width and cap style because that is purely for an open spline. So I'm going to show you how exactly an open spline is useful inside in paint node. So let's say I want to remove her complete eyebrows here. It's gonna be pretty easy because just take an open spline here let's do cardinal because i'm just using bezier you can use pretty much any type of spline so go back to the properties of this spline and we have all the similar properties which we saw earlier so before adjusting all these things i'm going to adjust stroke width here cool so as i'm adjusting you can see uh, our result already there 
cool so let's keep this in uh, output and see how our result looks like yes it has some issues so let's try to adjust a few properties here so as i told opacity is just for controlling the transparency so i don't want that to be transparent so let's keep that as default stroke width if you adjust this a bit more you can get much more better result so cap style is all about the spline which you are drawing so if you keep this as a round you can see the style of cap is rounded right now i prefer it to be rounded in this case so let's keep that as rounded and uh, smoothness is for adjusting the smoothness inside and i can show you the difference here so this looks better for me at smoothness is completely needed this looks good and uh, you can play with these properties a bit if you want this can help you to match the lighting. In this case, we are able to adjust the angle a bit. All these properties are definitely helpful when you are going to remove some stuff. Transform properties are not useful here because we used NS as our algorithm. So yeah, this looks uh, solid right now. Let's play and see. Oops, uh, we have to adjust this a bit maybe. So if you are not convinced here, you can adjust the um, stock width or even you can animate the stroke with here. So let's set a keyframe here and come back to this frame. Let's keep this as uh, maybe 80. Awesome, right? It's completely gone. So we don't have to do any kind of paint operations here. We can simply use in paint node and get the work done. This tool is definitely so much helpful for makeup fixes, especially. So if you're using Silhouette 2022, try using this tool in your work and see how it is helpful to you. Before all of you leaves, I want to tell one more important update about this tool currently this node doesn't support motion blur which is kind of a drawback according to me i guess in future they are going to update this node with motion blur which again will become super useful in our work very optimistic about the developments inside silhouette and uh, looking forward to your comments about about how this tool works for you so finally i will see you in another tutorial till that it's manu signing off thank you for watching